Welcome, everybody. Hey, we are joined today with none other than the legend himself, Jacoby from Papa Roach. My dude, how you doing today? You know, I'm doing great, dude. Album just dropped. Life is good. I'm stoked. I'm like, you know, it's a birthday. It's a birthday today. I'm partying like it's my birthday. <laughs> what? How you doing, dude? How's this for you, man? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm trying to keep up with life and the craziness. And, you know, we're blessed with so much music nowadays. And it's like, fuck yeah, yeah man. That's that, that's what it's about. It's, it's celebrating new music, celebrating, you know, awesome artists that like you guys that are still kicking ass and, you know, taking names. And like, like I was saying even before we started stream is like, oh, yeah. I know kind of uh, like a lot of my community is more on like that core, like side but all of us grew up with some papa roach you know like corn limb biscuits some lincoln park we all we all jam that stuff growing up and i will say a lot oh, of these yeah. singles you guys have been throwing out it's just nostalgia center for me like just going back ah, man thank you. fucking dicky shorts you know long socks skater hat skater fucking shoes and i'm like yeah that was the good times dude <laughs> hell yeah dude i'm telling you man early t late 90s early 2000s was a good time dude i ain't gonna lie yeah i ain't gonna lie at all dude that was a good run man Hell yeah, dude! I could fucking imagine, and like I said, a lot of a lot of people in the chat here, they're they're super stoked, and I'm excited to just chat with you, check out the new album. Which, by the way, fucking congratulations on a brand new album, Ego Trip. Like I was saying, the singles have been popping, and <laughs> yeah, I love I love the excitement, man. I fucking love that. Yeah, uh, man. I, I was gonna ask you. So when it comes to albums, everyone's kind of a little different as an artist, like. Are you more like, all right, album day, like it's party, it's celebrate? Or are you more like nervous, like, oh shit, it's finally getting out there? Like, what type of, what, what kind of vibe do you feel usually on, on album days? I mean, you know, right now, honestly, it's like I've been doing so much press that it's just, it's exciting to talk about the record. Right. I really haven't had a moment, like a beat, really to like kind of soak it in, but that'll be later tonight, you know? And, mm. but I keep getting messages, you know, I got a, my friend Jairus Johnson text me just a little while ago and he was just like, commenting on the record and just said a few you know some nice things and whatnot my homie uh dylan from undead was like dude i love bloodline and cut the line like those are my two bangers <laughs> you know and so people are hitting me up throughout the day like showing love and mm -hmm. it's uh I, it's cool man i'm stoked i'm just so grateful that you know finally this uh this thing that we put so much care and 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 work and pride into like we it's finally out it's no longer ours mm -hmm. it's now the people's and you know it's it's we know what we feel about this record, but more importantly, what is what do our fans feel about it? What is the what do the world feel about it? And so, right. we'll find out here shortly. But definitely an air of celebration, and you know, is 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 in the is in the is in the eat the ether right now. So it's a, it's a good vibe. I love that, man. You you I, it, I know it's always too sometimes a relief because it's like you guys have been on the album for a bit. I'm assuming so. It's like I know even just having those de demos on your computer or phone or whatever it must be, and trying to maybe even avoid listening yeah. to them so much that you get sick of them before album release yeah. day. That must be a struggle, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, there was a phase when, right after we got the record mastered, I was just like banging it in my truck right. every day, dude, just ripping it, you know, and uh, and then after about a month, I was like, all right, it's time to put this thing away. I stopped listening to it, and I hadn't really honestly listened to the record in the last, like, four or five months, right. to be honest. I just kind of just let it be. I knew what it was, and uh, I didn't want to wear it out before it came out, so now I'll probably bump it a bit more, you know, just, hey, here we are, dude. It's, we it's are, the release is upon us, and, you know, we did this thing last night for, for album release party. Uh, we showed up at a Shakey's Pizza. Right and threw down a set <laughs> that's like just amazing. rolled our equipment right up in a shaky's pizza and did it full circle right like anti-ego trip shit right you know what i mean just on the floor with the people getting rowdy like right back like it was way back in the day when it started right and a kind of a you know just a rad full circle moment dude that's fucking awesome i i, I have huge respect especially you know bands have been at this for so long first of all being so humble and chill and still being able to make like bangers like that shit ain't fucking easy i know that you we know? ain't no chumps bro we ain't no chumps <laughs> but also just a, a band like you guys that see like you guys seem to very much respect every era of what you have done right like you expect the past you respect the first albums all the way up to now and that is again replicated on the singles and the rest of the tracks which we're gonna get to in a second i'm stoked to hear it i'm okay, stoked cool, for cool, everyone cool. to check it but it's just like it seems like you guys are very in tuned with who you guys are as even being like fans of your, your guys self, like of your own music, right? Like as a consumer first and almost like artist second, if that kind of makes sense, right? You know, fan, man. Yeah. We're just music fans, really. It's like, it just comes down to loving music and the, and the craft and the process and, you know, being able to, uh, 
fail in front of each other when we're creating. I think that's the thing about, you know, making music is by the time we get to the end of the process of making this, this a song, mm-hmm. it's like there's so many terrible ideas <laughs> yeah. and so many ideas that don't win mm-hmm. before we get to the ones that win. And that process, it's humbling. Um, it's frustrating. It's exciting. It's exhilarating. Mm-hmm. It's inspiring. It's painful. Like it's all those things wrapped in one. And uh, at the end of it, we we create something that we can all walk away from and be stoked about. Right. And I mean, all, all that you know, must and, also bleed through the music in like a very healthy kind of artistic way oh, yeah. in a sense too, right? Absolutely, dude. And the process, you know, the way that we made this record was a bit different, mm-hmm. you know, from, from, from the last few records, you know, because we had more time on our hands. Right. And so, you know, we, we were like, Let's move, let's move into a house together. Let's bug out. Let's move the equipment in to the clear out the main living room, bring in the gear and let's throw down for a month and us living under the same roof, eating the same meals, drinking coffee together in the morning. Right. Like it, it just was like we dug deep, you know, in that process, a month being in the house. It was the Kickstarter for this process of this record. And, you know, we we uh, we left that place absolutely stoked about what we created but then at 100 percent depleted like i had nothing left creatively right i was like <laughs> take me home just fully like channeling some chester bennington right here yes okay bill lincoln park vibes yep oh what what was that dude a little something coming from the other side dude fuck all right man i didn't know we was in stranger things let's go man i don't know i don't know if there were psychedelics involved i'm not sure <laughs> just saying this shit what ego trip <laughs> smash the ego so this this track hmm. it's like the midpoint of the record right and so this is kind of like where the record takes a beat and then we just dive in deeper after this right and so it's a it's kind of a transitional moment on the record I, where it's like we just smashed you for like six or seven eight songs now we're like gg dude hey we streaming we live baby we live man we got we got fucking 1500 people in here damn thanks all for it with bacon we cooking with bacon grease over here dude <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll say one thing so all, all the guests we've had on here if they've ever met you they always say one thing which is why i want to part of why i want to have you on that you are the nicest right. person they have ever met in the music industry. Just, it just. I happened. think it's that's that's you know I do have a, a pretty good reputation in this business, mm. and I definitely treat people the way I want to be treated. Right. You know, the only person that I'm a complete asshole to is probably myself. <laughs> you know fair. what I'm saying? And so it's like, you know, it's a it's an important thing for me to uh, treat people the way I want to be treated. Yeah, it's man. just. I uh, I'll tell you I, I got some advice back in the day. I was out on tour with Corn, right? And um, Puffy from Faith No More, the drummer, was playing for Corn on this tour. Right. And Faith No More is like one of my favorite favorite bands. And it was my birthday, and and he had sent for me. He's like, "Hey, bring Kobe to the bus." And you know, we smoked a joint, and then he's like, "Hey, do I hurt your birthday, dude? I want to give you a birthday gift." I was like, oh, "All right, cool. Like, I'm tripping. This is my, you know, one of my favorite drummers of all time. Like, yeah." You know? Right. And he's like here's my gift to you. He's all, it's just advice. The same people that you're going to meet on your way to the top are going to be the same people that you meet on your way to the bottom. So act accordingly. Holy and I was like, fuck, dude. I was like, you know, and that was right when P Roach was like, just blowing the fuck up. And like I say, that's some of the best advice I've ever gotten um, in my life because it just, it stuck with me. It right. stuck with me to this day right and coming from somebody that i really looked up to and Mm. just had like such a adoration for their art to 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 give me that gift man it was like it was a special moment you know so that's cool i'm I'm glad my reputation is clean well yeah and and even from that you can tell you've been paying it forward because now all these people that grew up obviously with papa roach you know that these bands that are now growing and becoming more popular you know they're the ones seeing you be very humble and you guys do your thing and still kick ass and being like oh why the, you know, I, I guess I shouldn't be a dick, <laughs> you know, I guess I gotta be nice, yeah. you know? And like, you know, I mean, by all means, when you're on that stage, go full Freddie Mercury, you know what <laughs> I'm saying? 
be go full Kanye, dude. Like go be that rock star. Right. And for me, it's just like it's that's where it lives. It's on the stage, and then uh, you know, it bleeds over a little bit here and there, you know. But I, I try to just you know be humble a little bit. Do you do you keep up with a lot of kind of the metal ish releases nowadays? Are you kind of just like you found your bands that you really fuck with, and you kind of limit it to that now? Um. Well, you know, when it comes to, to to metal, like I guess it's it's got to be great to really Fair. catch my ear. Um, you know, I, I dig like some metal core stuff, I guess, maybe. Uh, Architects is one of those bands that just gets me off, you know, That's like chat, chat that. will all agree with you on that one. Oh, dude, Architects. Uh, I, I mean, I like that band so much. I have one of their T-shirts. Oh, you know what shit. I mean? okay. Like I, I, I rock one of those T-shirts. Or like if Sam sends me a text, I'm like, oh, God, it's Sam. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, you know, bring, bring me the horizon. Another one of those groups that brings oh, some yeah. of that metal, you know, like love those dudes dig what they're up to right um you know and then there's the classics oh, yeah. you know metallica mm -hmm. you know love that stuff um and and it's trippy because i really didn't become a fan of metallica until i was a little bit older right at the time when they when they were first cracking off i was kind of like nah man i'm into this like i like hair metal like right, poison right. <laughs> you know what <laughs> yeah, i mean yeah. uh, uh, terrible music uh, lovely music. One of my favorite bands growing up as a child. I, I have to out myself. You have to you know out saying? myself. Uh, you know, I like some of that glam rock too. You know, so I like some of that Motley Crue when I was a kid. Oh yeah, of course. You know, and just some of that explosive cock rock. Dude was like, that <laughs> is that was shit. Too. I've never heard it as explosive cock rock. That is a legendary. I mean, <laughs> yeah, dude, they, they make a mess, dude. <laughs> Peep this right here. Yeah. That is very Slipknot ass. I got you on that. Fucking hell, man. Oh. You no, know, we just gotta bring. We ain't done yet. Oh, shit. Jeez, they've been Pull rehearsing up. in that garage for the last 27 years. When, it, when is this gonna stop? Yeah, I know, I'm sick of it. I, someday I wish I could park my car in there. <laughs> that's, that's, so that's my mom and my, and my stepdad right. at the end of it. <laughs> so we had to throw that in. Just as a little comedic humor you know what i mean that's a dude that that's fun because I, I again another thing i really appreciate you know bands that you guys have been doing for so long is like you guys take the music seriously but you also know how to have fun you know what i mean it, it's like it's very yeah. it's fun it's light-hearted you know what i mean and stuff like even like little things like that it just ups that bar so much more it just adds so much value to just here's a good song but also you know like hey here's some fun added here's a laugh yeah here's a laugh man which which is always yeah. good man we all need a fucking laugh sometimes jesus i'm telling i mean right now especially more now than ever i tell you it's like we definitely you know take this craft seriously and you know there's serious subject matter in our songs but then on the other side of the coin it's like you got to be able to laugh yeah man you got to be able to we take the piss out of ourselves <laughs> and uh I think it's important to be able to not take ourselves too seriously because, damn, I can do that sometimes. And life's not fun when I'm taking myself too seriously. I love that, man. I love it. And and then it's just it's it has that authenticity to it too. You know what I mean? I feel like it's a lot Absolutely. easier for your fans to connect to you and and you know the music and the personality and everything. It's just this this big picture that kind of comes together. It's like, damn, like all right, like it, it makes you feel good as a listener. You know, even as a fan. well, you know, I I will tell you this. Like over the last like couple years since bands have been home and kind of locked away it's given a lot of different musicians ways to get out here and express different sides of who they are right through this type of medium right whether it's twitch streaming or youtube or social media it's gotten bands to kind of open up and just show different, you know just yeah. show a different element of who they are and i think that's i just think that's so cool do bands have been I going off nowadays with this shit bro i mean they got a lot of fuel <laughs> right fucking from the world yeah. and all that shit but like damn. we need it man yeah man. i think it's such a healthy way to deal with those thoughts and feelings man like just take your demons and pull them out throw them on the floor and stomp on their heads I, to some fucking music i couldn't describe you know it I mean? any better fucking hell <laughs> yeah that, that exactly but i know what i That's can what describe like. is papa Roach's new album ego trip out today don't forget check it out show them the love buy it pre-order buy for your mom too your mom wants you bro your mom yeah, fucks papa roach. your mama might like papa roach you know, i mean we've been around so long i bet you some of your mamas do like papa roach <laughs> yeah, That's a fact i bet they were at the front line of the shows back in the day man come on dude it's trippy man this trap metal stuff that, that's dropping it's like it's got it's just got it obviously it's got the groove right yeah. i love groove um but then when they just add that just heavy that super heavy element to it mm -hmm. whether it's a vocal 
or it's a guitar or it's the way that the drums are EQ'd or the piano is EQ'd. Mm -hmm. It just hits. It does, man. It's, it's fun, man. And it's, it kind of reminds me of what the new metal movement was doing, but just different, you know, well, yeah, that's, on just that's some new shit. Parallel to it. I never really thought of it kind of parallel. To yeah. New Cause metal. they're, t they're taking like this total urban thing and mixing it with some metal as fuck. Oh yeah. Right. Well, like that production too, like the background and everything the producer is doing, like that's, they're, they're, they're all core kids yeah. that do this shit. You know, like they're, they're all dudes that grew up on fucking heavy ass shit that are, you know, in this music doing this stuff, which yep. is cool as fuck. Absolutely, man. Uh, you know that dude, Morgoth, Morgoth Beats? Yeah, he, uh, um, Wayne, he sings for Winds of Plague. He was in Winds of Plague, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's been doing some of this uh, trap metal stuff too, man, producing for some folks. And he's just young and up and coming, you know, talent that's like totally plays like, you know, that deathcore style right but then he's working with dudes like ngk right. and like all this other <laughs> stuff too you know it's, it's pretty cool to see these cats that are just mixing and flipping these styles and bringing something new to the table yeah well i, I think uh, you know it's i didn't grow up with a lot of rap but i've always had that sense of look rap and metal they are the most energetic like kinds of music in terms of an angsty kind of absolutely stuff that pair you know obviously with punk and you know whatever hard rock and all that stuff but in terms yeah. of like mediums it's like it's a perfect pairing Right, combining those two elements, I think sometimes the metal world is just a little semi closed minded with it because I know because they're like, oh, rap, you mean it's all about money and yeah. girls and yeah. cars and shit. But it's like, bro, that shit goes can go fucking hard, man. Dude, <laughs> but you know, secretly, dude, those metal motherfuckers on the computer back there, dude, they're like, man, they they're googling up some hot chicks. <laughs> they they like the hot chicks. I love watching everybody else track their stuff right and there's moments um where you know it's 3 a.m in the morning and they're trying to come up with a super unique sound and jerry's in there playing a part while there's two guys manipulating two different pedals right. at the same time to create a moment right right and i just i love that part of the process mm -hmm. where it's like it's not about a plug-in it's like create something that's original and different and it's it, it only happened once right? right and you caught it right there yeah. and i love i love those moments and i love witnessing them and it's something that we've tried to do on all of our records is create moments that are you might they might just go right by you right mm -hmm. and it might just go right by your but we know in the process of doing this that we took that care and time to create something that wasn't just push a button you know right. what i mean and that must also inspire I, I that like when you see stuff like that i'm sure sometimes that inspires you. you're like oh fuck now i want to do something on that you know it like it changes the game you guys all kind of it's like this cycle of inspiration that you guys all have within each other where someone does something cool absolutely it's like, oh, fuck, now i want to do something cool because now i'm inspired to do something with that and then someone else fucking dr we got drums over here and they're like oh what the fuck now okay we got vocal spicy and the guitars now i gotta spice my shit up you know it's like it's cool it's healthy that's Absolutely. It. I got to tell you, uh, I mean, not to be too long winded, but um, that's kind of what made us wanted to switch things up um, with the people that we worked with, because we started to work. We were working with these producers that have been making records for 25 plus years, right. 30 years. And it's like they've, they've they did all that experimenting and all that kind of fun stuff when they were younger. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, we we're coming up with these ideas and they're like, oh, that's never been done before. Right. And I'm like come on dude like let's get adventurous and get weird like right. and they just kind of wanted to just keep it back in the lane and so when we were working with these younger producers it's like let's go let's get weird dude like let's let's bring two four five tons of sand into the parking lot and make a beach in the studio in front of the in, in the parking lot and go write songs with our toes in the sand in north hollywood <laughs> like let's that. get weird right <laughs> or or uh like here's a vision we want to do we haven't done this one yet but we want to take two guitars tied up to ropes okay and have like something like holding it up super high plug those two guitars into two amplifiers which are microphone uh, right. mic'd up and have them tuned open tuning to the same uh chord oh my god light them on fire oh, i didn't and watch spin, <laughs> spin them or spin them till they collide and clash right and right. I want to record that sound. I didn't expect the fire sound? part. I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, like that's going to be a cool noise. Then we're just fucking. Fire just adds fire. an element of danger. You know, you got to have an element of danger to this shit, you know, because it's like, yeah, you can throw a guitar and get that sound. But if it's if it's on fire, then it's 
now you're cooking. Now you're cooking. I oh. love that. Yeah, just get weird. You know, I, I love that because I feel, you know, some bands maybe in the past, you know, they're like, hey, we do what we do well. People do, you know, and they, and they stick to the yeah. lane. It's safe and they, they sell their records and they're happy. Everyone's happy, right? But it's like, and over time, you're like, well, everyone else is getting weird. If you don't get weird with everyone else, everyone, you know, you're going to stay behind enough and you're going to be weird then. That's the funny part is like, if everyone else is getting weird and you're the one not getting weird, then you're the weird one. It's like, well, what the fuck? Yeah, dude, get weird, stay weird, bro. I'm just, I love it. I just love that experimental process of, of this thing. You know, it's art. It doesn't have to fit in the box. It trips me out what people are doing with metal and guitars these days. Dude. It's just like, it's progressed so much. Dude, dude, even vocals, like nowadays, it's like if you, as, as a new like extreme metal vocalist, right? If you can't do like yeah. the Phil Bozeman low plus like the Danny Filth high and like everything in between, it's like, that's like the starter. It's weird, you know, for like the screaming yeah. stuff. It's, it's, and everyone's got zombie noises and shit now. And it's like, what? Like, what? Yeah, and like the pig squeal and the fucking, <laughs> this guttural. I'm like, I don't understand. I Honestly, I would like to sit in a room right. just because I'm a, I'm a singer, right? I'm yeah, like, yeah. I, I utilize this thing. I do voices. I do all these other things with this voice. Mm. Um, I'd like to sit in a room with one of these fucking metal singers and just like audibly hear what sound is coming out. Yeah. You know, how loud it is, what, how they're doing it. Cause the technique, it blows. Cause when I scream, I'm like, it's coming from every ounce of like, it's like, yeah. it's loud. I don't use you know, some of these dudes are it's like quiet. I'm like, how the fuck do they create that brutal sound? And it's like not yeah. super loud. It blows me away. It's, it's it's impressive. It's fucking crazy what people are doing as. But yeah, fucking Randy. Vis oh, go ahead. Randy from Lamb of God. Oh, Randy. I heard him. Yeah, we were chilling and I, he's a good buddy of mine. And, and I was like, dude, how the fuck do you do what you do? And he's like, oh, and he started singing in the dressing room. And I was like, I thought it would be way louder than what it is right but he's just he's just got this technique it's he's i love i love man of god those dudes fucking rip dude yeah i mean they, they're probably when it comes to metal like what i think metal is right they're probably my favorite like quote metal band got you well that's it's so funny too because like metal is like that's such an obscure term and everyone's a, everyone's yeah. very defensive over their little pocket of metal nowadays it's that's like, cool though it's like excuse me that's extreme black and deathcore like what what are you talking about bro like don't don't be saying that's just deathcore it's it's very funny in in that sense where it's yeah. like you know, hey dude people want to take ownership and you know feel like they're part of like mm -hmm. a scene right it's like yeah. it makes it special for them chat chat's I going crazy because we're talking vocals and they said i have to show you 20 seconds of i don't you know lorna shore by chance or will ramos i okay uh no i'll, I'll do this for chat 20 seconds and we'll, all right cool don't you want to see some crazy shit like absolutely like mind-blowing stuff so this is will <laughs> it's like a dying pig <laughs> i want to get I wonder what's going on in that motherfucker's head. <laughs> it's like, that's is a, he just a sweet guy in he real is. life? He is the sweetest dude ever. That's the it's thing. Like, is like, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> I'm like, that's what makes him even cooler. <laughs> it's I fun. fuck with it, dude. Yeah, uh, there you, you go, give chat. Me a vocal lesson. You are you happy, chat? There you go. All right, I, I yeah. That, that they always ask that one when they, when we have a vocalist on because they're like, we got to make yeah. him go what the fuck because yeah, it's yeah. It's, that is that is totally on some what the fuck. It's like. Uh, growing up a Mike Patton fan. Right, right. Um, he's just done some of that really crazy experimental noise core vocal stylings. And mm. like, I, that was like some of my first love was like how to not sound like a, an American man singing. Right, right. How the fuck do I sound like a dying Japanese girl? <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like how the, yeah. it, I love that. I love that about Mike Patton and, and his experimental music that he did. I was really into uh, acid jazz as well hmm. at a young age. And that's like John Zorn, super experimental saxophone, spastic music. Right, right. And it just had these like elements just super extreme hmm. off the charts. I remember playing that stuff and my mom, my parents would be like, the fuck are you listening to? Mom? <laughs> it's my favorite band, mom. What do, what do you think? What's wrong with our son? What's wrong with Dude, yeah, just like, like I don't know. Where do we start? <laughs> Dude, what 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 are your your parents? I'm assuming. What, when did your parents kind of get on board? Have they gotten on board with like you know you being kind of more in that the alternative scene, metal ish, harder rock kind of stuff? Or you know, uh, when I was a teenager, my parents thought I was absolutely crazy because uh, our I, I was a terrible singer. The band sucked. We were just oh my God, trash. Okay. <laughs> and you know, it's like 
but I had this wild dream, this wild idea. And my mom was always supportive of the arts. I played in the school band, you know, so I was like a band geek. Right. And she supported that. But when I told her I want to be like a rock star, she's like, <laughs> she kind of laughed like, good luck. My step, my stepdad too. Like, all right, good, good luck, son. Right, right. You know, fast forward probably about four or five years later. And, you know, I was really taking it seriously and really, you know, trying to become a better vocalist and learning how to sing and mm -hmm. perform. And then they started to realize like, oh, this really it could actually be a thing because we're playing shows, you know thursday friday saturday sunday and then i go back and work during the week and right. i was paying my bill i was paying my bills doing this living on my own and kind of that at that point they, that's when they were like all right like we support this we, we 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 see your passion in it we understand it like we respect the work ethic and and so i was probably in my early 20s um and then next thing you know we got a record deal and you know they've been fans ever since they're always like oh they support it and, that's awesome man. You know, celebrate it so it's cool I, I i mean shit we got them in the music video yeah well i mean that that's always a good feeling right <laughs> I, I'm, with any musician when you know it's a bit tougher you gotta get, get a little uh you know against the parents sometimes and then they see it right yeah. they, they see the vision they're like oh that's what our kid was doing you know all those years fucking making the random pterodactyl noises you know in the shower or whatever exactly. the fuck totally right? right it's like oh absolutely now man. it makes sense so it's it's always really cool to see and again that's it's just it's very humbling when that happens it's like fuck yeah it's like absolutely you know it's a beautiful feeling man Papa Roach, i surrender any any backstory you want to throw out of this track or you just just hit play and go for it um you know this one it was it was one of those tracks that was kind of a sleeper when we first wrote it we were just right. like ah, i don't know man it's like the chorus doesn't seem like it fit right it had the to it had the wrong guitar tones on it Oof. it just didn't have the right groove to it so we kind of had to rework it a couple times mm -hmm. um but very proud where this this song ended up and you know lyrically it's a, it's a special song for the for the record and in saying that you know i don't have it all figured out I still got a lot to learn. Right. And uh, I think that uh, I try to stay in a space of being teachable um, and not th thinking I'm just king shit everything. And, and uh, <laughs> yeah. it's a, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just a good reminder of us a humility, but I, uh, I love this one, man. And yeah. this is, this is a, uh, one of my son, Jagger, it's one of his favorite songs on the record. So I'll throw this out to my boy, Jagger Shaddix. Again, instant groove. Ben. It's the bounce. This is the get your, well, used to be lighters. Now it's the get your iPhone out, you know, the iPhone light. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, too late. I don't want to miss the opportunity. I missed it. It's, it's all good. It's all good. There you go. Oh, yeah. It was over. It's Fuck, over. I fucked up. <laughs> Damn, dude. I'm the type of dude that keeps my cell phone in my pocket at the rock shows. At the, yeah, yeah, dude. Fucking hell. And then, I love how that, that's such a nice end I, I feel like again still i still haven't heard the heart of the whole album in that context but like even just that being like here's the send-off like you know there you yeah go. there you go like that's that's the little, nice... little, we in touch with our emotions yeah it's feelsy <laughs> but it's got the chunk it's got the hooks and that's something again i, I really respect and i appreciate from bands that have been doing it for a while because you guys you guys are playing it safe you know because you could have Play that safe yeah. by just doing here's the soft song you know just that's it but no yeah. you threw some chunk in there or here's the chunk song no you mix and match, right? With what you felt yeah. that you guys went with it, man. I fucking love that. Absolutely, man. That's the that's the that's the method to our madness is it's just we just twist and flip and chop and screw and just do our thing, you know, and yeah. it's it's a journey and I'm just it's exciting and scary and fun all at the same time. And mm -hmm. you know, we know it's like we we will not stop that element of what we do because it just it's authentic right you know it's real and i uh i love making music and and i love turning it over to the people and letting them be the judge people could say what they want do what they want but i know i love what i do dude fuck dude honestly that that's a clap right chat come on that's a clap moment right there i love that man hey you know, hey. you're you, and if people don't like it, they, you know, fuck them. <laughs> they, they, you know, that's, that's all right. Yeah, you know, that's it. It is what it is. But at least you're you, and so at least you're comfortable Absolutely. with yourself, and that's important. And again, it it seeps through the music. That authenticity seeps through the music from everybody in the band, and it it comes together very nice. You know, it sounds like an authentic album. It doesn't just sound like a oh yeah, we've been a band for a bit, so here's another thing. You know, so we can do the yeah. thing and go on tour, and then you know whatever, do another one later. Yeah, you know? nah, man. Like you can tell there's that love and that passion, which is just it's it's very it's it's humbling to see you know people that you've oh, yeah. been you, doing man. it for so long dude so this one is just the kookiest most oddball track on the record the weirdest one it's 
just I we got to leave on the fucking uh, after Spaceman. It's like I feel like I got room to play this song. Okay, okay, I got so, you. <laughs> uh, this one was was the first vocal um, and song that I recorded in the process of this album. And I remember I was like, I need, I want you guys to like take the door because I was cu- I was cutting the vocal with the SM7 like yeah, right the behind SM7, the door. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm in there rocking. I'm like, dude, take the door and slam the door in my face while I'm cutting this vocal. What the fuck? And so uh, here we are, dude. This one's called Bloodline. Bloodline. All right, let's go. Whoa. (laughs) Exactly. Whoa. Why not? Fuck it. Who cares? Fuck it, dude. (laughs) Dude, what the fuck? Y'all got weird as fuck. I like it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You know, you got to have a couple tracks on the record that really just are like, you know, I, I, this is what I don't like about records. Sometimes Hit me with it's it. like when when every record is trying to be a a, a single, mm-hmm. like you know, especially in you know, kind of, we're a mainstream band, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like it's and, and when you make a record and it's like every song is trying to be a single, and then you have like three singles and then like seven other songs that just aren't kind of singles, right? Right. It's like fuck, fuck, trying to like yeah. That's where I want to take those songs, throw them in the trash, and go. All right, let's do some shit that stretches people's minds out, right? And just makes the re- the record an interesting listen at times, and not not always like the first time you hear it, you're like, oh, I love that. It's like give it a fucking couple listens, you know. And right. and to me, that's how some of my favorite records are. And and this album, you know, the sequencing of it, the song selection, it's like we almost made it like as if this was like a pl- a playlist. Like, what would this playlist? I love be? that as a you mindset. Know? And uh, that was that was the process of making this one. And so, yeah, man, it's a uh, it's it's sprawling. It's all over the place. It's all things Papa Roach and all things like, different and outside the box, just all smashed into one. Just listening to what I've heard. And again, even being a, you know, a fan from growing up with you know, last resort. <laughs> if I could ever, oh, yeah. How, I have I'm to not- ask, how many memes do you like? How many times do you guys talk about something or enter in a sentence? And then someone says, this is my last resort just for the fuck of it. Like, is it you sick of that you shit know- by now? <laughs> it's it's everywhere dude it's it's even in my house <laughs> with my kids you know really? it's funny dude and uh it's one of those things that honestly i'm gr- i'm absolutely grateful for because we have a classic we have a cult classic and a bestseller wrapped into one that's amazing man. and 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 in meme culture it people take the piss out of it and we i love it because right. it's like it means that you've made it into the fabric of pop culture yeah and it it's just we're part of the landscape of what people are talking about still and what else could you ask for i love you know what i mean it's like it's such a great thing and every time we perform that song it ignites the audience and you could be at a bar mitzvah and (laughs) drop that song and it's gonna go somebody somebody in there's be like that's my fucking jam you know what i mean or i could be at tsa fucking airport security (laughs) and fucking (laughs) Are you the cut my life? And I'm like, I am the cut my life in the pizza guy. That's right, it's dude. Let's piece. go. <laughs> Jacob, I'll be that guy. I'll be that guy. My dude, it's it's a fucking blast. Your 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 excitement, enthusiasm, it's infectious, man. And I gotta say, just hey, man. Again, I, I having a lot of artists on here and and seeing artists that like are so passionate and just fun and love. It just you know as as a musician and as everyone in chat too just in this world it's it just warms my heart seeing people that yeah. love what they do so much and like you know aren't scared to fucking throw down with their own shit you know oh, and, yeah. just, and just have a good time man dude it's it's been a fucking blessing dude the album fucks i'm so excited to check out the rest of it but dude i wish you guys the fucking best chat can we get some claps for jacoby of papa rose right here let's go man what a fuck I'm, chatting. <laughs> I'm clapping for the chat baby i'm clapping for the chat <laughs> jacoby Shout dude. Out to the chat it's it's dude you're, you're you're welcome anytime on the show to shoot the shit fucking look at tiktok i don't care about it you're you're always hey, dude let's throw down again dude i'm totally down dude i'll fuck with some new, new music which you do for sure dude anytime man dude it's, it's been a blessing any last second words for the 1500 people still over here watching hey thanks for tuning in being part of this i appreciate y'all uh hope you i hope you like what you hear and uh Keep on tuning in, man, because my Nick Nocturnal got it locked, dude. You got a great thing going here, dude. Your fan base is is lovely, man. And uh, keep up the good work yourself, man, because when uh, this came up on the schedule, Jerry and Tobin were like, dude, you're, you're doing Nick Nocturnal. I'm like, now I need uh, to get to know what he does. 
Oh, and so I tuned in. I was like, oh, shit, this kid's a real deal, dude. So shout out to you, oh, man. Dude, Keep up you, the good man. work, dude. So, send real. much love to Jerry and Tobin as well, dude. That, that's so I will. Nice, dude. Yeah. Thank you so much, bro. Congratulations on the new album. Ego Trip, Jacoby, guys. Check it out. Show them the love. It's out everywhere. Right now, fucking buy it again. We're going to check out the rest of it on stream. Jacoby, have a beautiful album release day. Celebrate oh, your ass off. And, dude, I, I hope we cross paths again in the future, man. Have a good one, all right? We will, dude, for sure, dude. All, all right. right, Nick. See you, bro. Peace. Have a good one.